Hello and welcome back to Ricky's Sketch. Uh, carrying on from last week, we're going to be finishing off the Link and the Red King of the Red Lions drawing. Um, so today we're going to be drawing Link. Uh, as you can see, I've started off just by drawing his head, which is how I usually start off with people. Um, so it's just an oval, basically. Uh, and moving on from his like head, we can start to figure out how his body is going to look, the proportions, everything like that, the shape of the body. You can see that I've broken that down into like a little basic shape, kind of like a, a rectangle that's just curved. And um, we're drawing this line now, which is just going diagonally down, which is going to like extend as his arm, um, whilst he's, he's holding the Master Sword in the exact same direction. So it's just going to be one long diagonal line. Uh, like an extension from his arm basically so I'm just getting in um, some of the basic lines for the sword as well just so that we know what we're drawing um, again just look at reference for the master sword I mean I did, didn't know that it would be like what the master sword would look like for Wind Waker because I'd completely forgotten because I haven't played Wind Waker in ages uh, but now we're just making just drawing a bit of a like hexagon kind of shape just where his sleeve um, well, not yeah, where his arm kind of comes out of his um, vest that he wears over his clothing. Uh, obviously, he's got his under vest, which is like a lighter green, and then he's got his uh, tunic, that like the green got kind of coat that he wears over his under vest. Um, so obviously, we've got the hole in that, like the sleeve hole, um, and then just V neck basically. So as he's going to be turned to one side, um, obviously you got to get the proportions right so that you, it's like a three-quarter view on it. Uh, so obviously you see more of the left side, well, his right side, but our left, um, we'll see more of that So because he's turned that way. Um, and then obviously we're just moving down now towards where his belt will be. So I'm just drawing in his waistline there and getting the buckle in, which is just a simple circle. Um, I mean, as we can break Link down to basic shapes a lot easier. I should be able to get like all of him covered instead of having to do like the details and that kind of thing in time lapse um, because obviously some people won't want to see that. Um, but yeah, so we are just drawing in his shield now. So just obviously it's just a shield shape, and then we just make it 3D by adding some some more lines. And in front of his shield, well behind his shield. Um, there shall be his um, sword holster, his sheath, if you will. Um, or is his? I think his shield's behind that. I think it is. It should be. I think I'm just drawing his sheath at the moment. Sorry, I might be drawing his shield in a second. Uh, you can see that wavy line that's just um, concealing the the sheath a tiny bit that's just going to be an extension of his hair so we've just put that in there so that we know obviously not to press it down too hard with the sheath because we know that that's not going to be too visible uh, and then we're just going to be drawing his little kind of skirt in the little outline for that um, and from that then we can start to just get the curve of the skirt in and move on to his leg as well uh, obviously this leg is going to be a lot more visible because he's kind of like um, using that leg to stand on the edge of the boat uh, and we're just getting his boot in now, just the basic outline for that. Um, so not too difficult at the moment, just a kind of rectangular shape and obviously his boot is more square because his feet are so small. Um, so I'm just trying to get his leg just about right and obviously you can see the, the you'll see a bit of the back of the tunic as well, um, just from the view that he's in now. Getting some creases on his trouser leg. Um, I mean, obviously, I was in a bit in two minds about this because with this style of length, the less detail, the better, really. So the creases were kind of something that I was just messing about with to see if that would go. But we're just getting the main boot in for now, um, so that we can get that right. So obviously, that's just a square, really, and there's a bit of a tip to it as well, where his toes are going to be. Uh, but at this angle, again, it's kind of more so that the boot is facing us than to one side because that would surely break his leg um, if it's facing that way. But that's pretty much it for his leg. It's quite a simple shape. Um, and then we've got the back of the tunic like I'm drawing in there. His other leg is a lot more obscured by the uh, the boat, the back of the boat itself, so we won't need to worry about that one too much. Um, 
so there that's pretty much it just those two lines um, will do it for that leg because as it's going to be like straight just extended downwards uh, but you're not really going to see too much of it um, just erasing the belt a bit there so that I can get the curvature of the uh, the skirt in a bit better because obviously the wind's blowing a bit so we're going to need to make that crease and also as his leg as one leg is up that's going to be um, making the skirt lift as well so you got to think about that when doing other body parts like in the way for example as his legs lifted up the skirt has moved so it's obviously not going to still be flat straight down um, so we're just trying to get that in here speaking of that um, so making his leg a bit thinner there because it needs to be about the same size as his other leg and just rubbing out some of those lines as well because the view doesn't look quite right on his leg there um, it's got to be more of a straightforward look so seeing the back of his leg isn't going to really look right so I'm just curving the skirt a bit more so that it can kind of obscure that section a, a bit more because obviously we don't want to get too much into like, the back of his leg because you can't see it if I carried on with that then it would have looked a bit, a bit odd because that's not how it would look in real life um, and just by making the skirt run a bit closer to his leg um, that's going to help us give give that effect that the look the when he's lifting his leg it's kind of like moving the skirt out of the way so it's just resting on his leg um so if I drew it closer it would look it have more of that effect. Um people probably won't like me calling it a skirt, but it's kind of a skirt. I don't really know what to call it. I know that it's a tunic but I don't know what a tunic is really. Just know that he wears one. Um, but that's basically it for his lower body. Um, I mean, I can start moving on to his other arm in just a second. But just checking to make sure that the legs are perfectly right. Um, perfectly okay. Getting a bit of shading in there so that we can try and uh, see whereabouts his knee is going to be because, like, his knee is going to be a bit prominent. And also, getting that little curve in at the bottom, we're going to be able to see where his boot is because that would still be there. Um, so we can start to draw his other arm now, which is going to be like um, the opposite to his left arm, his right arm, our left arm that we can see, um, which is just pointing diagonally down. This one's kind of going, uh, it's like pointing right, not so diagonal, um, not so much of a, what's it called, like a, an extreme angle or anything like that, it's just more like a lazy arm, he's not lifting it as much as his other one, but from that we can start to get the wind waker in as well, which is obviously a crucial part of the game, so we need to make sure to get that in the drawing, and um, that is the way that the wind is blowing, thus the reason why the mast is going the opposite way and his skirt is blowing in the wind everything is blowing that way so we'll obviously have to take that into consideration when doing his hair as well because his hair has got to blow off to one side um, I'm hoping that this video will be able to teach a bit more than my previous ones especially my previous bad videos like um, I don't know how to explain it really but hopefully it should be a bit better than the uh, the King of the Red Lions one which was on last week uh, because He's a lot smaller of a figure, so it takes a lot less time to draw it. So that means that I don't have to like go into time lapse with the details because I mean, otherwise I would have just got his basic shape down, and you wouldn't be seeing me drawing in his hand or anything like that. His hand is kind of just like a diamond shape, um, not just like a rhombus, and you just work around that, like, like drawing in the fingers. Um, obviously, instead of going to a point, it's like moves off into his elbow region, um, but yeah, if you think about the the other side where the wind waker is, it is moving more into a point, pointy shape. Um, so you can kind of get get the shape of his hand there from a diamond. Um, that's like on its side. So instead of being longer at the top, it's longer horizontally. If that makes sense, hopefully it does. Um, we'll be able to see a tiny bit of a sleeve, which is why I've put that in there. 
Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that this one will be a bit better than last week's episode because obviously we can follow along with it a bit better. Um, as he's a human, we can kind of break it down into basic shapes a bit more. We're starting to get a shield in now, as I said earlier, wrongly, because I thought that we would join the shield when we join the sheath. Uh, but shield, again, just a shield shape, just like a square at the top, but then it curves at the bottom, obviously. Uh, it's not the Hillian shield, it's more of just the, the basic shield that you get at the start of the game. Um, I prefer that shape. I mean, obviously, if he was holding the shield, then I'd draw the Hillian shield. Uh, or the Hyrulean shield. I'm quite confused as to whether it's Hylia or Hyrulean. Um, but then, belt buckle, just simple curving pattern. Um, kind of like a six, pretty much. Basically just looks like a six. Um, which, it the swirl gets smaller as it goes in to the centre. Just keep that in mind. Um, Obviously, you can draw them in whatever pose you want. Like you, have, you don't need to copy this one. But if you were to like wanting to draw it in this way, then hopefully this is a bit of a better guide to follow along with. Um, we've got his body in. Most of the details are sorted with that, so we can just start to draw the other hand now. Um, which is kind of more like I mean, if you think about it, shape-wise, it's kind of like a parallelogram. Um, with his um like his hand extending that way instead um as he's holding the sword like you're gonna be seeing um like you won't really see his fingers too much just like his knuckles and then it will curve round where his hand is like so and then we'll just have the thumb that wraps round the other side um like that and that's pretty much all there is to that hand to be honest. Not too much detail really uh, because obviously the fingers are on the underside of the handle so um, you're not going to be seeing those. Um, so, I mean, like I say, a parallelogram is kind of like the shape of that, to be honest, um, minus the thumb. Uh, but obviously, when you put the thumb in, it's just like, just as I say, just wrapping around. Um, I mean, if you think about the edge of his thumb, it's kind of running um, parallel to the the holster of the sword um, and then just meets up. Like, it goes diagonal and wraps around the uh, the actual... I think it's called a holster, like the handle, basically. Um, but now that we've got that done, we can start to move on to more details of the sword. As I said before, um, I wasn't really aware of the Wind Waker sword until looking at reference, because like, the Master Sword, surprisingly, is quite different in every single game. So I did have a picture of the Master Sword, and then thought, well, what if it's different for Wind Waker? So I had a look, and lo and behold, it was. It was significantly shorter, because obviously Link... Well, in these style of games like Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, and Wind Waker, um, and like Four Swords and that kind of stuff as well, uh, Link is portrayed a lot shorter. Um, it's a lot more cartoony, so obviously he's a lot more stubbier. It's like uh, kind of like chibi. Um, so his sword is also a lot smaller as well. Um, but that's basically the. I think it's called. Is it called the hilt? I'm not sure. Like, the bit where the sword goes into, um, obviously the sword is just going to be a rectangular shape that curves in to meet at a point in the middle, um, at the end, sorry, at the tip, um, but there's also kind of like a octagon shape as well, which is where the Triforce symbol goes, um, so I'm just drawing that in now, and then we've got the edge of the sword as well that runs along there. And that's basically it for the sword. Just make sure to get that octagon in there because I would have forgot about that again without looking at reference. I would have completely forgot. But we can start to make it look a lot more 3D uh, with those extra lines along the edge. And then obviously now we can make it join at the tip which is where his stabbing part will be. Um, again, as it's like three-quarter view, you're going to be able to see more of the right side than the left side because it's going to be obscured. So yeah, I mean, now that we're moving on to the head, um, we just rub it around that with the um, with one of my kneaded erasers so that we can get rid of the uh, the lighter line of the um, the mast kind of pulley thing. That's the technical term for it, isn't it? Fisherman 
who are watching this agree with me please um, or just actually let me know what the actual word is I think it's a mast pulley thing um, I don't know what it is that stick behind him it's going to be behind his head we'll go with that um, now we're going with the little elf ears I mean we ra rubbed robbed we rubbed out um, the bits of his head and have made it darker around where his chin is now and where his eye will be and uh, we can start to draw in his little pointy ears which are kind of like kind of a bit like a triangle um, or another diamond um, and now we can draw his um, his lovely locks his sideburns whatever they're called um, the hair that's by his ears um, which are incidentally pointing towards the right which is where his wind waker is blowing the wind so we're going to obviously count that into well, take that into consideration when doing his hair um, his hair kind of looks a bit like a fish like if it fish didn't have a tail and the fish was diving towards his ear if you can see that kind of looks like two fins which are the top and bottom bits of his fringe and then you've got the back proportion which is a bit in the middle did anyone else see that fish? that's the best way that I can summarise it because I didn't really take into account basic shapes when doing his hair so we're going to go with that it's a fish um, everyone remembers learning the fish shape in primary school don't they? Uh, along with the famous ones like the square and the triangle here's the fish which we are expertly using here to draw his hair um, but obviously again all pointing in the same direction because that is where the wind is blowing make sure to take that into consideration uh, a lot of the time I always like I always forget because when doing like a, a light source or something like that I end up putting the shadows on the other side for some reason fortunately it's not too obvious like you can kind of get away with that um, but with this I mean if the mast is blowing strongly in that way like the sail is blowing strongly in that way then it'd be a bit weird if his hair was going off in the opposite direction um, but yeah again there's another one of his side things his locks I don't know what they're called we're just gonna go with sides um, and there's the little underside of his ear as well. Um, I have drawn his the top of his ear as well, the tip, but I think I might rub that out in a second because obviously it's going to be a bit more obscured because he is turning to one side, so it's a bit weird for the tip of his ear to be showing. We we shall see. We shall see if I rub that out. Hopefully I do because I've pointed that out now. Um, so if I keep that in and end up keeping it in throughout the entire drawing, then I'm going to look like a right idiot. But we've just got the little curves as well to um, separate the portions of his ear, like where the lobe is, and uh, the top curvy bit of the ear as well. Uh, we can just draw some kind of like straight, straight lines to run along the horizontal edge of his face, so that we can get the eyes in. Again, obviously, as he's standing in that view, like that way, like a three-quarter view. Um, his right eye is going to be a bit smaller than his left eye and is also going to be significantly closer to the edge of his face as well um, it probably won't make too much of a difference there because obviously his hair is already drawn in so um, it's obviously going to be about the same distance like from the edge of his right eye no left eye to the hair it's going to be about the same distance for the edge of his right eye to the edge of his face if that makes any sense hopefully it does um, but if you just imagine both edges of his head obviously the left eye is further away than the right eye in this view um, but his eyes are pretty simple just kind of um, ovals that would meet at a point but don't because we don't need to get that in and big ovals for his pupils as well um, which again don't get to meet because they are like they hit off his eye lines I don't know how to describe it it's um their pupils big big cute pupils obviously the pupils are further again they're close to the left side 
I don't know why I'm bothering to go be so intense with the shading, considering that that's all going to be rubbed out later. Um, but let's do that for fun anyway. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, the pupils are obviously towards the left side because he wants to look directly at us. But as his face is turned to one side, he's he can't look directly at us without his pupils being on one side, basically. Um, but using that horizontal line that I've drawn in, I can see where the top and the bottom of both eyes are going to be, so that they're in line, so that neither are bigger than the other. Um, sometimes this works, and sometimes it doesn't. You may notice that whenever I try to draw faces on a lot of my drawings, um, the eyes don't usually match up, so I do have to end up rubbing them out, even though like I've drawn that horizontal line in to make sure that they're not bigger or smaller than the other. They still tend to be bigger or smaller than the other, usually. Um, his eyebrow is kind of like just any other eyebrow. Kind of like... What kind of shape is that? Kind of like a... I don't know. Kind of like an eyebrow. So we're going to go with the eyebrow shape. That's what that's like. Um, kind of a bit like a triangle. Like a... Which, what kind of triangle is that? There's isosceles, there's, um, the other one, and there's another one, and I can't remember either of them. Equilateral triangle? That's the equal one, I think it's equilateral, but there's another one, the other one, that's what it looks like, how it's like, it, none of the sides match up, basically. We'll go with that. Yeah, so it's one of those triangles. You can see I've drawn the other eye in while I was baffling on about triangles there. Hopefully we've learned something about triangles today. His other eyebrow looks like the other eyebrow, okay? Let's just, we'll stick with that and um, save embarrassing ourselves. Um, but that one's slightly more raised because we've piqued his interest in speaking about triangles. He's uh, He's clearly interested in this now. He wants to speak to us about triangles, but... If he wants to speak to us about triangles, we're going to need to give him a mouth. And he's going to have to have a bit of a cheeky smile. Um, not that cheeky. I've drawn that in a bit. Like, the tip of his mouth is, like, lifting up a bit too much. So we're going to go back and rub that out in a bit. There we go. We've rubbed out the tip of his ear. Okay, now I can stop worrying about that. Uh, we've also rubbed out the tip of his lip, his smile. So that that's not too exaggerated. That's a bit better, but I'm going to say that that probably still needs rubbing out. We might look at that in a bit. I can start to draw in his famous signature hat now. Um, so we've just got the creases there, uh, because obviously it's folded up at the edge, um, because the wind is blowing it in that direction. So he wears it over his head. Um, so obviously it's, it's quite tight on his head. So when the wind is blowing, it's going to cause creases to flow in that direction. Um, the head, the hat can basically just be drawn like a triangle. I mean, it's basically a triangle. I mean, you're going to be obviously messing about with the lines a bit so that it's not like just a obvious triangle or anything like that. But it's that kind of triangular shape where it goes to a point. Basically, we're just making the hat go to a point. That's what that means. Um, and now I can start to rub out those lines of the sail and the mast that were there. Um, so we're looking pretty much finished, to be honest. Um, obviously we need to add in a few more details for the sword, and I really hope that I'll rub out that mouth soon, because it just doesn't look right. He's too happy. There we go. We've rubbed out his mouth. Okay. The past me must have realised that his mouth was a bit too happy. Um, so we're going to rub out the edge of his face a bit more, give him a bit more room, make him a bit chubbier. I mean, he is, he is a little, like, cutesy chibi man so we need to give him a bit more of a chubby circle face moving the point of his nose a bit more to the right because obviously we've got the three quarter view going on I'm still going for that smirk but it's just not working so we're going to rub that out and try a different approach hopefully this one seems to be too much of a smirk still it's even worse than the past attempts so let's rub that on out in a second, um, yeah, it's just not right. Come on, past me, rub it out. Yes, no, that's not the right part that you want to rub out. Rub out his mouth. Come on, 
Come on. There we go. And now we shall give him a bit more of a straight smile. There we go. That's a bit better. If we're going to make it like peek up at any point, it should be the left-hand side rather than the right. Looks a bit more natural now. He does look happy. He doesn't look overexcited, but he is just sailing. So, I mean, he's not going to be too happy. Um, that's much better, though. I think we've got more of a link going on there. Um, so I'm hoping that you've managed to follow on along with the tutorial a bit better in this episode. And um, hopefully the error of my smiles isn't ruining your drawing as well as mine. I think we've got a good smile on now, so I might need to put in the uh, the description where to find his smile. Because we went through quite a few of them. Um, he's a man of many faces, but we've got the smile looking good now. Um, so we can start to get in the v-neck of the sh uh, undershirt again. Um, and everything is looking pretty much done, to be honest. Um, I'm just going to be going around darkening some more of the lines. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be getting the rest done in time lapse. So I'm hoping that this was a bit of a better tutorial for everyone. Obviously, I do want to make sure to break things down into basic shapes a lot more in my upcoming videos. Um, but for this one, I think it is quite a bit of an imp improvement. Um, I have got three more videos coming out after this. Um, which I've already made whilst doing the narration for these now, um, which I didn't really take basic shapes into consideration. I mean, the next episode might be a bit better for for the basic shapes. Um, I mean, in all fairness, I think I did break that one down quite well. Um, probably not as good as this one. I think this one was okay um, in terms of following along with it. Um, as I say, like, I'm just adding more like darker lines, a few more details to it now, so not too much to teach at the moment. Obviously what I draw in is the little Triforce symbol that's going to be good on the Master Sword and the hilt needs a bit more um a few more darker lines and a bit more detail in there as well, which I'm gonna be doing. Um I think we're doing the Triforce now. Everyone should know how to draw draw a Triforce. It's just an equilateral triangle with three equilateral triangles inside. Four. Four equilateral triangles inside, one of them pointing down. There we go. Um, how's that for basic shapes? Even naming the shapes. Equilateral triangle is the name of the day, the shape of the day, the word of the day. All of all of them. So we'll go with that. Um, but yes, I now that I've done this, I'm going to be going ahead and getting all the inking and the colouring. Well, not the inking, no. Because with this drawing, I'm going to be just doing colouring. Um, and no inking to do a different kind of colour style. So let me know if you like it. That's always good. I was quite happy with the end result. Uh, obviously after the time lapse I'm going to do my usual thing and come back and say a few words. Um, but yeah, the next few episodes won't really be taking into what I'm saying now into consideration because it's in the future. No, it's in the past. It's already been done. Those videos have already been done whilst I'm talking to you now. So I'm talking to you in the future now. Um, or is it the past? It's yeah, I don't know. But we can draw in the edges of the the boat as well. You're gonna see me draw in at the little like top for where the mast shoots out as well. That top's gonna be leaning up against the mast itself. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was a bit better of a tutorial for you guys. I don't know why I'm wrapping the video up now because I'm gonna be coming back for a minute after this. Um, but this is just to let you know that. Um, I'm going to be trying to get getting basic shapes more into my tutorials to make them a bit easier to follow along with. But I do hope that this one was a bit better, as I say. And I'm just going to jump into time lapse now, get all the colouring done, and come back to review. <laughs> have it. Um, so that is my tutorial on how to draw the King of Red Lions and Link from The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Um, 
really awesome game. Obviously, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. If you have checked it out, then I don't know why I'm telling you to check it out, but check it out again. Um, really awesome. Haven't actually played it on the GameCube, but did play it on the Wii, uh, the HD collection version, HD version. It was good, very good. Um, and I did kind of like doing this art style, um, just giving you a little shot of the top as well, because we can't see that, obviously, because of how tall the drawing is. Um, but I did really enjoy doing this drawing, hopefully I'm going to be doing more Zelda drawings because I do like Zelda and it's really fun to do. Um, it can break it down to basic shapes more and he's little and tiny so that's always fun. Um, and the colour and style was really fun to do as well. So let me know what you guys think, hopefully you enjoyed the video as a whole, hopefully you enjoyed the tu tutorial and found it a bit easy to get along with. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next episode.